Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning, as tired as we we may be. If you will stand with us in a prayer before we begin our worship this morning. Dear Father God, we, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. Be with us this morning as we worship together with you and as we praise you. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace on top of grace More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth Grace on top of grace How sweet the sound Once lost, but now found Heaven came down And grace rescued me sin and penalty at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace Lord how you love me I don't deserve grace on top of grace more than I've had more than I'm worth Grace on top of grace Hallelujah, I am free From my sin and penalty At the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace With your grace on top of grace The sound once lost, but now found heaven came down and grace rescued me. How sweet the sound once lost, but now found heaven came down and grace rescued me. How sweet. The sound once lost, but now found. Heaven came down, and grace rescued me. Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. At the cross, you took my place with your grace on top of grace. You know, we were just making fun of him and how he messes up so much. Hmm, weird. <laughs> he loves me, I love him. We have a good time up here. Uh, good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you could make it here this morning. And we only have a few announcements this morning. Um, so they sent an email out this week that there has been an increase in um, fraudulent emails being sent from uh, two members of the congregation. It can be from Linda or Pastor Exman, most likely. So make sure that if it's questionable, I wouldn't answer it or call Linda if you need um, more advice on that. Um, next Sunday, May 12th, is Jim McLaughlin's students perform their spring musical recital here at Central Trinity at 2 o'clock. So you are invited to attend that and come uh, enjoy that with Jim. 
Um, Tuesday, May 14th at 7.30, the Civic Chorus Chamber Singers um, from the music Thursday Music Club will perform their spring concert at CT. This concert will be directed by Ann Briggs, so you can come and join them for that as well. And then there is a new Bible study coming up starting, I believe, oh no, May 13th. Uh, Monday, May 13th at 7. It is uh, Wrestling with Doubt, and that'll be in the Pairs and Spares room, so you can come and join them for that. I think that is a four-week course. Other than that, I think that is all the announcements we have this morning, so we're going to go ahead and continue with Ain't No Grave. Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power when my freedom song is found. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. My body down. When I hear that trumpet sound, I'm gonna rise up out of the ground. There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down
could hold his body down. Maybe seated. Boy, I really like that new song. Um, and speaking of that, too, uh, I don't know if you realize, but if you download our uh, CT app on the App Store on um, uh, Apple or on the Google Playlist, and if you just go and search for Central Trinity uh, United Methodist Church, it'll it'll come up. It looks like a little CT uh, like we have outside out front. And um, you can actually like go and open up the Ignite playlist and listen to the songs ahead of time. So when it comes time in here, then we can start really start uh, singing all those out. Uh, and plus, they're just fun to put when you're in the car or somewhere else. If you've got that hooked up or at home, uh, pop some headphones on and uh, drown out the world and just kind of listen. So uh, you're always welcome to do that. I don't know how often we say that, but that's one of the things that you can catch off of the app. Uh, and it just, I think it just says Ignite Playlist. Is that yeah, what it says? Yeah, it goes to Spotify. Yeah, and it'll go to Spotify and you can just start playing it. Uh, it it's important for us to remember what we were just singing, you know, that there, there isn't a grave that's going to hold down the resurrected one. The resurrected one is, is here for you and here for me. And it's up to us to share those things in those moments. And uh, that's, a, that's a hard and daunting task to do. But the great thing is, is the one who loves you so much gives you the strength and power to do those things. And uh, think about that as we say a prayer this morning, if you bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, only you know all the things going through the minds of those who love you that are called according to your purpose that are here this morning, that whatever's happening in their own life, whatever's happening in the lives of their family or the things that are trying to bring us down, we know, Father, that uh, there is no grave that could hold you. And with that comes the idea that there's no uh, love that isn't greater than the one of your son dying on the cross for our sins. We celebrate that this morning because we know that in that sense of communion, in that sense of presence, in that sense of being with you, we can continue to feel connected and feel your presence as we share, as we grow, as we love. And I ask that this morning, Father, whatever's going on in uh, each of our lives, may you meet us there, meet us there and hear our prayers. And then also help us to figure out how to meet the prayers of our friends, our church friends, our family, and be there for them as well. We give all these things to you this morning as we praise and as we worship and as we share together. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing 
just move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that we could all worship together. Help us to look to you for the knowledge and wisdom we need to prepare for the message. Thank you for bringing us here today and guide us for this upcoming week, Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God, and in your name we pray. Amen. I really, really appreciate your singing this morning, guys. That was really pretty. Uh, I like all those songs. It's it's important when we sing, when we pray, when we uh, share in these kind of moments of uh, the message together that we realize the the spirit of connection that happens when when we sing, when we pray. Um, and there was words to that song that Olivia was just singing. And it, it's that, I know it's not much. Uh, now, that literally probably is the mantra of the Christian because we, we think to ourselves, how can what I say or what I do or how I act affect others? I just don't have that much that others have. And we think about that and the way that that happens all the time. And it occurs in the word uh, that we're talking about this morning, uh, testimony. And the idea of testimony is is not anything new. It's in Scripture. It occurs and echoes uh, throughout Scripture again and again. And it's usually in the form of testify. 
uh, and, and what it means. And actually, the Ten Commandments were given as a testimony, a testimony of truth. And so... To give, a test, uh, to give a testimony or to testify is really to tell a story. And there's nothing better than a real good story, a story that you read, a story that you watch, a story that you see unfold, and it starts from beginning to end, and it just unfolds, and you watch it happen. Now, here's the hard part. When you're living that story and you think, well, this stinks. <laughs> this is not the way I wanted the story to be. This is not how I wanted the story to look like. And so uh, what they were just singing, you know, I know it's not much. Uh, what was the words that come after that part? Uh, yeah, I know it's not much, uh, but I have nothing else fit for a king. How many times do you feel like that? How many times do you feel like, what you give isn't good enough. What you give isn't as good as the next person or the person sitting next to you. And it's almost like we have uh, Christian envy, right? It's like, boy, I wish I had that story that that other person has or a story of redemption. Now, we've all been probably someplace where we've heard someone give their testimony. And in that testimony, they've shared from their heart, they're shared from their story, uh, and it might have a very redemptive arc, it might have a very uh, topsy-turvy arc, arc that goes up really high, sinks down really low, and then comes back up again. Uh, yours might be different. It might be more of a of a steady path with little blips and things. Uh, I liken it almost to if you've ever watched the heart monitors and as they go up, down, the little blips and things. That's how life is. It's those little blips. Sometimes they're big ones. Sometimes they're littler ones. But the rest of it is how you figure out who you are. And so your testimony uh, is really your story. And what happens is, is that we think to ourselves, my story isn't good enough. I don't have anything drastic that brought me here. In fact, if you were to sit in all the churches in America this morning as they're getting together, or all the different churches in the world even, uh, and you would say, what brought you here? Probably eight or nine out of ten would be, well, I've been here since I was younger, or I was brought here by a grandma or a grandpa or a mom or a dad or somebody like that. Uh, and often it started out that you were just brought here because you were made to go here, right? Uh, you were made to go to church when you were younger. How many people when you were, uh, we'll say up until your teenage years were over with, were, it was just you were going to church and that was it? Yeah, more than half, right? Uh, how many, if you tried to get out of that, got in pretty good trouble? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if Lisa was down here, she would say that. That was always uh, her parents' rule is, you know, if you were uh, well enough and fine enough to go out on Saturday with your friends and hang out, then you were fine enough to get up in the morning on Sunday and go. And that's just the way it was. And so you would say to yourself, well, my testimony is not that big a deal because it was something that I was made to do, and then as I got older, it became something that I chose to do. It's often why as kids get out of the home, they choose to not go to church because they felt like it was something that they were made to do. Now, you don't have to answer on this one, so I won't put you on the spot, but if that was you that were raising your hands up until a certain age of teenage years that you were made to go, how many of you stopped going then for an extended period of time in like your 20s or 30s. And that's probably a good amount. Yeah, well, those of you that raised your hands, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because what happens is, is life catches up to you. And so what you look at and say is, well, my story isn't really that big a deal. I was told to do this. I did it. Then I chose not to do it. And now I'm choosing to do it again. How is that a testimony? 
But in between all that, your life happens. Your life was lived. And so John's talking again here, and he's writing. And he's writing about what the truth of that means. And it's in 1 John 5, uh, verse 6, is the first part that we're looking at. It's going to be up there on your screen, and you can see it. Uh, And it, it says this. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his Son. You can go on to the next one. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him, whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Now, he writes this real simply, and so he's basically just saying that there's three things that show who you are in your faith. Uh, There's three that give testify. There's three that tell your story. The first of that is uh, the spirit. The second is the water. And what that means, that is when you say, uh, you know, I believe in Jesus, then, then we say, you know, we'd like to baptize you. Whether you were baptized as a child, whether you were baptized as you got older at confirmation, or whether you got baptized as an adult. Because what you're saying by the baptism is, is that inside of me, a change occurred, and I became a believer. And so the water is your testimony to the world that you were baptized in truth uh, by the Spirit of the living God. And the reason that we do that publicly is so that you can give a testimony. Because a lot of us feel like we can't say or talk that testimony. So whether you realized it or not, even as you were a child, and maybe it wasn't the the Lion King moment and you weren't held up, you know, holding that baby up. You ever wondered why when uh, little babies are baptized, the preacher holds the baby up and kind of walks them around, some of the preachers do? It's kind of that Lion King moment because you're saying this is your pride. This is a part of your family, your church family, and you should love and uphold this child. Literally, uphold. That's what it means. And uh, that's why it's done. And then the last part is the blood. And the blood means that you know that Jesus' blood uh, and him dying on the cross for your sins washed away your sins, and so you're going to testify by your life. That's what it means by the three, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And they are in agreement that our human testimony is something that we accept. But then John writes, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. So that's the part where when we say, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough to give forth of who I am, that God says, but you're forgetting the most important part. Your testimony is not just your story. It's my story through you. And that's the what's hard to understand, is that when we speak and when we share about who we are, who we love, what we stand for, what we're really doing is saying, this is what God is doing in me. It's not something that I did. So when we go somewhere and we hear someone say, you know, well, at the age of 14, uh, I sold drugs 
to try to make it by and was living on my own and I did this and I was sleeping in the gutter and then someone reached down and pulled me out of the gutter and gave, took me to a group home and in that group home I met so and so and then that so and so raised me up and brought me into who I am today through the church and then we all clap and say wow what a wonderful story and it is but it's not your story your story is yours for the very reason of what that means that it's about you. But the hard part to understand is it's not just about you yourself. It is about you in Christ. And so however that arc occurs, however that ending is to play out, however that beginning began, however the middle is, wherever it is that you are in your story, and you, you may just be beginning in it. Or you may feel like you're towards the end of it. All we know is that the three are in agreement. That's your testimony. So when people see you, hear you, uh, relate to you, it's the Holy Spirit coming out in you. Now, I'm not saying that there's not moments that that Holy Spirit coming out in you is probably not the Spirit. It's the Spirit of something else. And, you know, we all have those moments where something else comes out, and it's not the Holy Spirit. It's the anger maybe that we have. It's the hurt that we have. It's the things that we've gone through in life. And we look and we wonder and we say, well, I don't understand this. I don't understand why things are happening the way they're happening. But God says, hear me, and my spirit will come out through you. And it'll be about me, not about you. That's like the most famous thing, right? Now, again, you don't have to raise your hand and incriminate yourself, but how many of you uh, gentlemen or, or ladies, because it's really not uh, regulated to just one uh, sex or the other. It's not just male or female. Uh, it's, it's both that equally do this. But how many of you had a relationship in your past that you went to that person and gave the, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I want to break up at this time, but it's not, it's not you. Don't put it on you, but it's me. But really what you're saying at that moment is, it is 100% you. <laughs> I'm just trying to help your feelings, right? It's like whenever we say, with all due respect. Whenever you hear someone say, with all due respect, you know that what's coming out of their mouth is a load of baloney right after that. Because it's literally politician speak, right? It's uh, people that sometimes are in charge speak. They're saying, with all due respect. But they don't respect at all. And so the, it's, it's not you, it's me, is really us trying to say, no, it, it's about me. <laughs> it's always about me. It's been about me since the beginning, right? It's been about me since that moment that we had that Lion King moment and we were held up, right? When you were born, you were held up. Those of you that were there and born uh, for the birth of your children, I know you were born for yourself, for your own birth. You know, if you weren't there at that moment, then something weird happened there <laughs> in between all that, some Freaky Friday kind of moment and you're losing your train of thought. But you all were born for that moment, but you maybe watched one of those moments. And that's why the doctor takes that child and kind of holds them up, and makes sure, give them a smack on the butt, make sure they're talking, breathing, uh, whatever it is that babies need to do at that moment. Because it's that moment where we get that wake-up call that, hey, it's time to wake up and it's time to be about living. And so human testimony is all about that. But what God says to us is, it's not you, it's me. Only he's not saying it the way we say it to everybody else. He's not saying, it, it really is you. He's saying, it is about me and what I'm doing to fill you. You know the saying, you know, you're, are you a cup half full or a cup half empty? 
type of person? Are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist? You know, really, there's just two kinds of people in life, and that's really what it is. It's whether or not you believe that good things are going to happen and they will, or it's whether or not that you think the whole world's going to crumble and it's, it's going to. You know, that's just what it's about. There's really no in-between there. We ride our chain of emotions. And so what God is saying there is, is that if you believe that you're a life cup half full type of person, not a cup half empty, then you're kind of saying, God, fill the rest of that up for me. Fill me up so that when I get to those moments that I need to share, when I need to grow, when I need to reach out, when I need to be something different and share that testimony, my testimony of you, I'll be able to do it. That's what God's saying to us. Remember that. It's not you. It's about me. And so the Holy Spirit gives us this testimony, and it's a testimony that's true. And the Spirit's primary role continues to be to reveal Christ in us and then to reveal Christ to us. Because that's the other side of the story. If you're saying, John, how do you expect me to go out and share what I believe because I'm not really sure what I believe? Have you ever had someone ask you one of those tough questions? Well, why do you go to church? Well, when you go to church, what does that mean? When you go to church, does it change you? Because it doesn't seem like it changes you. And then they ask you these probing kind of a questions about life and about faith. And sometimes we say, I don't know. Or it comes out more something like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what my faith is. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to believe it. Have you ever noticed, though, those that claim that they don't believe it seems like they know it more than those that claim to know it. And so it's affirming Christ's message in us. That's our testimony, is that our faith is revealed through us, and it continues to be revealed to those that believe. Now, what does that sound like? Well, we've been skipping back and forth between the letters of John, the little tiny books, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then the Gospel of John. Well, here's what the Gospel of John, John 3, uh, beginning with verse 11 says. Very, or truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Now, this is Jesus talking here, and he's trying to tell them uh, when, at the beginning there where it said truly, truly, or very truly, or whatever your version uses, that double speak right there means that what's coming next is super important. And he literally says, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we've seen, but still, you people.
people did not accept our testimony. So Jesus is saying here, if you want to accept it, you have to first know it to be true. And you have to know it because you believe it to be true. And so he goes on and says, you know, well, I've spoke to you about just earthly things. And you know the earthly things that you've learned in your whole life? What color is the sky? It's blue. What color is grass? It's green. It's the things that you know about life. What's going to happen if you walk across the street when cars are coming? You're going to get hit. It's those common earthly things that you know. And then he said, but if I spoke to you about those earthly things and you didn't believe, well, then how then are you going to believe the heavenly ones? So if the things that we question about life that are just about everyday moments, then how are we going to understand the heavenly ones? And so when we don't understand that, then we won't have eternal life. And in those verses I just read is probably one of the most famous belief-based testimony-based verses that there is. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How do you know? Because God gave. See, it's not about you. It's about him. And he gave his son for you and for me. That if you just believe, you'll have eternal life. If you just reach and grab hold of that belief, then all the other things of life don't matter. It's not that they don't matter in the fact that they might not affect you or they might not hurt you or they might not cause you to lose sleep at night. But if you ultimately put your trust in him, then those other things truly mean nothing in the sense that he means everything. There's a verse that comes right after that, and I just read it to you. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn it, but to save it. I think a lot of times that's what we think of about faith. We think that we need to judge. We need to condemn. We need to say, that's wrong. That's this. That's that. And I know that there are verses that say those things, but there are also are verses of love and forgiveness and hope and truth. And really what communion is, is communion is us gathering together and saying, here's what we believe, that Jesus broke the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me and the remembrance of the sacrifice that he gave when he died on the cross for our sins. And then how do we know what that gift is paid for? How do we know even though it was a gift that was freely given because grace is given to you and to me free? It's free because it was paid for by his blood. That's what the cup stands for. The blood of Christ poured out for you, for me, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Why? Because Jesus is saying to you, it's not about you. It's about me. It's about what I'm doing in your life to share so that you can share your faith, hope, love with others. Because what does 1 Corinthians 13 say? These three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest, the greatest thing in all the world and the greatest of these three is love. If we have not love, we have nothing. We are nothing. And so the love that we have that comes through us is a light that shines to the world. 
If you cover that light, if you don't give your testimony on who you are because of what he's done, then you're covering your light and you're not sharing it with others and they're just in the dark. We know what that means. We get small tastes of that every now and then when the electric goes out and the power goes out and we're just left with nothing, right? There's many of us that that doesn't happen very often, especially if you're younger. And so when that does happen and the power goes out, you almost feel like you're back in settler, early settler times and you got to go turn the butter or whatever else because you're left to twiddle your thumbs and think, what am I supposed to do with my life? Why? Because I can't look at the phone, can't look at the iPad. You can look at them, but they're maybe not charged or they're maybe not going to work. But it's all because you've lost power. And in this sense, there's power in the blood. There's power in the life and love of the one who loves you so much that he gave it all so that your testimony is a testimony that's about him. So as my communion stewards come forward and as we share in the body and the blood this morning, as you come to the front, you can take a piece of bread and eat it, take a cup and drink it. It's, it's just a symbol, but it's a symbol of something greater, something more wonderful than you can ever imagine because it's not about you. It's about him. And on this day, as you come forward, know that he loves you. And that's really all that matters. So at this time, you can come when you're ready and come up and share in the bread and the juice. I surrender my life, I'm in all of you, I'm in all of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. a place where sin and shame are powerless where all the love has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love Here 
you so much for coming here this morning and sharing communion with all of us. If you'll stand for our last song, Chain Breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, we're saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run from things we know it just ain't right. Then there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, we're saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, we're saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, we're saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. Thanks so much for coming this morning, and we will see you next Sunday. See you later at night.